The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Sin is a problem. Do you understand the length that Jesus had to go to for you to be saved? Do you understand that though Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation? Do you understand that Christ took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men? Do you understand that Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross? Do you understand the lengths that Jesus had to go through to ensure that you do not end up in hell? Anyone who hears the preaching of the gospel but refuses to accept Christ, their heart gets a little hard to gospel. There are people who come to church but refuse to change when the Word of God addresses them. Instead of showing remorse for their sins, they harden their hearts against the hammer of God's Word. They go to church. The pastor preaches about their sin, the sin that they committed last night or a few hours ago. But rather than repenting, rather than being remorseful for their sin, they harden their heart to the Word of God. And the more you reject Christ, and the more you reject the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life, the more hardened you get. Your heart becomes like stone. Honesty is the first step to repentance. If you know you have a problem with sin, I am not even saying go to a minister, go to your husband or wife or anyone and share your problem. I am saying today be honest with yourself and accept you have a problem. We as humans have a tendency to deceive ourselves. Yes, the devil is the master of deception, but self-deception is a real thing. One example of this is that we are able to see everyone else's sin but not our own. Another example is that we as humans make excuses for our own sins in order to justify them, to make them not look as bad as they are. Sin is a problem that we must all face. You and I need to deal with sin. Let's focus on the phrase for a moment. My sin is always before me. David's sin was always in front of him. Sin will haunt you. Sin will torment you. Sin will cloud your judgment. Sin will destroy you. Sin will break your home up. Sin will destroy your health. Sin will take your money away. Sin will rob you of your joy. Sin will put a wall between you and God. Sin will throw you in a hole deeper than you ever thought you could go. Sin unchecked will leave you in a place where you will wonder, how did I get here? I say all this because I have seen it firsthand with my own eyes. Sin does this to people. For sin to be such a small word, but to be such a big problem is mind-boggling. Three letters, S-I-N. How can three letters be the cause of so much destruction? Sin is such a big problem that the only person who could deal with it is God. Jesus had to come down to deal with sin. That should show you the magnitude of sin. We should not enter lightly into sin. The number one problem in the world today is S-I-N. Sin is such a big problem that God himself had to come down and deal with it. Do you understand that? Jesus had to come down to deal with sin. Sin is the root cause of all the problems in this world. Sin is the root cause for all the sorrows in the world. S-I-N. Do you understand that all the problems in this world can be traced back to sin? Sin is not something we should purposely go into. You need to deal with sin in your life with extreme, and I mean extreme decisiveness. You need to have a ruthless attitude when dealing with sin in your life, because sin will cost you more than you are willing to pay. James 1 verse 15 then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Romans 5 verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned.
Now the question is, what happens in the spirit world when you sin? When you sin and you continue to sin and sin begins to take over your life, something happens to a person. It may not be seen outworldly, but it happens spiritually. A stronghold is formed. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 and 4 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When sin grows in someone's life and it is rooted in their life, it becomes a stronghold for the enemy. And once the devil has a stronghold, he won't let it go. We see people struggle to be freed from a sin that they may have entered into consciously or unconsciously, and they feel as if they are tied down by someone or something. Anyone who has battled addiction knows what it's like to face a stronghold. It is a battle that takes its toll. Pastors see these things. An addiction is hard, hard, hard battle. Oh my, it is a hard battle. Strongholds are something you want to avoid in your life. I have seen strongholds take people to the hospital. I have seen strongholds break up marriages. I have seen strongholds break up homes. I have seen strongholds take people's wealth. And I have seen strongholds take people's health. I have seen strongholds take people down a hole deeper than they ever thought they would go. Do not casually enter into sin. So many people think they can just sin one time and stop. But brothers and sisters, it doesn't work like that. The grip of sin is strong. And the problem with strongholds is that one stronghold always, always introduces another stronghold. It begins with lust, and that becomes a stronghold. Then, lust introduces you to the stronghold of fornication. And then, when you are married, that stronghold upgrades to adultery. And then, the stronghold of adultery introduces another stronghold called deceit. Do you know the level of deception required to hide an affair? Constantly having to lie about your whereabouts. Constantly having to lie about who is texting you. Constantly having to lie until lying becomes a part of you. Even in situations where you don't have to lie, you begin to lie. Why? Because that stronghold of deceit is a part of you. And all of this started simply because of one stronghold always opens the door for more. The answer to all strongholds is one man, Jesus Christ. The answer to sin is Jesus Christ. If you are struggling with sin today, go to Jesus. If you have the weight of hell over your life, go to Jesus. If sin has taken your joy and your peace, hope and future, go to Jesus. If you are lost, go to Jesus. Live in Christ. Abide in Him and allow Him to change you. And once you begin to live in Christ, that stronghold will weaken. When we are talking about living in Christ, it means you must accept everything that He gives you. You must take all His instructions. You must follow His steps. You must allow Him in every area of your life. Jesus said this same thing in John 15 verse 4, that abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. The fruit that you will bring forth when you are in Christ is the fruit of life. You cannot live if you are not living in him. When you abide in Christ, you will overcome that stronghold. I have seen Jesus deliver alcoholics, drug addicts, criminals. I have seen Jesus deliver them, the ones that society had counted out. I have seen Jesus allow them to overcome. Are you living in Christ? Do you believe in him? And do you do the things he has commanded you to do? You cannot say you love Christ and refuse to do the things he has asked you to do. If you do not love him, you will not do the things he asks you, and you will not have the access to victory. You have to believe in Christ. You have to obey Christ. That is the only way you can be safe from death. That is the only way you can avoid the impending destruction that will come through sin. Oh, so the
last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.